right guys, we're back with part four and now we're going to be adding our borders. But before I can add my borders, I need to measure my quilt top to make sure I know what size it is so that I can add those borders accordingly. So I'm gonna go inside and we'll get started. guys it's a whole nother day and I am actually working on measuring my quilt top and I already have it folded in fours and what I'm going to do is use my tape measure and measure throughout my quilt top in the same spot until I get edge to edge And that measurement is 68 and three quarters. Now this quilt should be square, but I am also going to go ahead and refold this quilt top the other direction just to make sure. So again, I'm going to fold in fours. So again, it is 68 and three quarters, and I'm going to write that number down. For us measuring, we're actually done with the actual measurements where we will need to have our quilt top out. So now we're going to talk about the quilt top. In Electric Quilt, I have my borders where I put my long sides on first, which is my sides, and then I put my top and bottom. But in this case, your quilt is square, so it really doesn't matter. However, this is not how I want to sew my borders on. And what I want to do, I can't figure out how to design an Electric Quilt, so I'm just going to draw it onto this um, paper and I'm going to use a thicker sharpie so you can see it in the camera but what I want to do is I want to sew both of my side borders together before I add them to the quilt top on both sides so in true essence if this is my quilt top around this big square here where I've got it pieced I want to sew these two strips together here and here So in true essence, what I'm doing is I want to make sure that I'm getting the measurements for whatever this piece is. This piece will also be the same. So we just determined that our strips were the length of this quilt top without any borders is 68 and 3 quarters. So I'm just going to turn this just so that I can get this situated right. And then we're going to put 
okay turn it back around so you can see that and then this border my first border is going to finish at three inches so I am going to cut this 3.5 okay 3.5 for my first border my second border finishes at five inches so it's going to be cut 5.5 okay so in essence we're going to cut two each because I want this to go on to the left and I also want it to go on to the right so then you would go ahead and sew these two seams together here and put them onto your quilt top so these two pieces I said seam sew these two pieces together and then you're going to put it on your left side and then you're going to come over here and do the exact same thing sew these two pieces together and put it on the right side of your quilt okay guys my uh, battery ran out and I didn't know it had ran out so I had to recopy this sheet and start over before I could do the top and bottom borders okay so we're just gonna pick back up where we left off I just went back and did my sides so now what I want to do at the top border is I want a piece let me pull this down a little so you can see this I now want to put like an accent piece in my corner here right there I actually want a square so what I want to do is run this top piece across the whole entire top and bottom of the quilt but I don't want to run the top piece across the whole entire part of the quilt. So this is going to run all the way through the quilt here and here. So that's going to be one long strip. And I will give you that measurement in a minute. And then what I want is to put a little piece right here of this border fabric here. I want it to run up so remember that this border is 5.5 inches cut so we can go ahead and put 5.5 by this width of this first border is 3.5 that we cut so we actually need to cut four rectangles from our first border print because we're going to do this to all corners okay so that's the size of this piece here the size of this piece right here is just going to be a square which is 5.5 by 5.5 and let me pull this down so you can see my notes here I'm sorry about that so then this square right here we're gonna need four from our final border that's 5.5 by 5.5 for each okay now the only last piece that we've got to do is we've got to cut, get the measurements for this border piece and this border piece now this piece is going to run from edge to edge I'm gonna go down here so if I have a three inch border plus a five inch border finished that would equal to an eight inch finished border okay okay so then if I'm multiplying eight times two that's equal to 16 so if I put my 68.75 and add 16 That would be 84 and three quarters that I want to cut the length of this. So it's 84.75 by 3.5. So that's this top here. So for this piece that's running clear through, 
it's going to be 84.75 by 3.75 and I will put all of the cut measurements on a screen by themselves so that you can see where they're going and um, <laughs> I'm sorry about the math and the complications, but I do want to explain this so that my beginners know what I'm doing. And you don't have to always do just a simple border where you're just completely going around all the time. Okay? So we're actually going to be doing this twice. So when we do this, we want to cut two because we want to do it to the bottom. So we want to do the same thing at the bottom of our quilt. So we're going to go ahead and say to cut two of those. Then for this top piece here, it's going to be 68.75 because it's the same width as the quilt top here. So we need to just cut two pieces that are 68.75 by 5.5. And you want to cut two because you want to do it to the top and the bottom. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these pieces and I am going to come back with my cut pieces and show you how we're going to assemble this quilt top. So for right now, I know everything that I need to cut when I have my fabric out. If I don't have a fabric piece long enough to cut what I need, then I'm going to go ahead and sew pieces together so that I can get the lengths that I need. But I like to also cut my borders on the lengthwise of fabric, meaning that when I cut my uh, border pieces, this here is my salvage edge. This is the salvage edge here. And so I like to cut long pieces off of my salvage edge. And I'm actually just using scraps that I had left over that was in a scrap a uh, pile of scraps that I got from a friend and so that's what I'm going to be using to cut my pieces from and some of them are you know this is just a scrap that happened to be she had already cut lengthwise but if it's not cut lengthwise already I will be cutting them lengthwise so this is going to be my outer border fabric here so I'm going to go press this get all my fabrics cut and pressed and then I'll be right back I'm back and I have done all of my cutting and I thought that I would just go over it one more time. And we're going to talk about our side pieces. Remember that both of our side borders are going to be cut to the same length. And that is 68 and 3 quarters. Um, I have a first border here which is cut 3 and a half inches wide. And then my outer border which is the darker green is cut to five and a half inches wide and so when I get to the other end both of these are actually cut to the same size and while we're on these borders I may as well just go ahead and say according to the instructions you can just go ahead and piece these two pieces together um, one seam along the entire length of the strip set so do that twice because you want to do it one for each side so go ahead and just sew those pieces together and then here is where it gets a little bit more complicated I've got my first border piece underneath and I put it on the bottom so that when I show you this end where it's meeting up and I get down to this end where it is not meeting up because what's going to happen is you're going to take your pieces that we cut from up here these uh, outer border pieces were cut 68 and three quarters by five and a half and then this long piece here was cut 84 by three quarters this long piece is cut 84 and 3 quarters by 3 and 1 half inches and what we want to do so that both of these pieces meet up before we sew these two together is we want to sew this on first and then put this on and then what happens is this piece is now once you sew these three pieces together it is now the same size as the 
fabric back here. So when you're sewing this on, you want to sew this to the left side of this strip as well as the right side of this strip. So let me open this up so I can show you what I mean. So I'm just going to put my two ends. This is the same strip. I just have my two ends showing so I can show you what I want you to do here. So on each end of your strip, you want to sew one of these pieces. And you also want to sew a square. And then when you're finished with that, you're then going to take this long piece and sew it along the lengthwise edge of uh, your strip. And you want to do that twice as well. So it is now late and I am actually going to go to bed. It's about 2.30 a.m. <laughs> so what I will do is I will sew these pieces together here. And then I will come back and uh, I'll sew these pieces together. I'll sew these strip sets together, and then once I get these sewn, I will add it onto these long pieces. So when I come back, I'm just going to have my four pieces for my borders, my left, my right, my top, and my bottom. I'm going to have all of those units pieced, so you can actually see it pieced before I sew it onto my quilt top. Hi, it's T, and it's the next day. I have done the sewing of the border pieces before I attach them to the actual quilt top. So, so I am going to show you my sewn pieces because I am actually going to be sewing them onto the quilt top doing the live tonight. So let me point you down and we can get started with the final steps. All right, so I'm here and I have my border pieces that when I was sewing these side pieces together that is this unit here so basically i have sewn this long strip set together i have folded it in half and pressed it so here is my pressed edge and then you can see where my ends are out here meeting and i know i can't get the whole thing into the frame for you guys but i just went ahead and pressed those seams toward the outer border fabric so you can see here where my seams have been pressed towards the outer border fabric. I did that twice because I'm going to put those on both sides of my quilt top first. So I'm just going to plop that up here on the top for a minute. And then down here, I have my top and bottom borders. Right here, this is where I pressed them into the fold. But first, before I could even do that, But remember when I told you that we had to piece these two pieces onto each end of this strip? So that's what I did. And then on this end, I also have the other piece. And then once I got those pieces sewn, I then sewed it to the first border fabric, my inner border. And then the same thing, I went ahead and press the strip set in half so I know where center was and I've done that twice for my top and bottom borders. Now I am not going to be showing you sewing which I haven't been showing you the sewing thus far anyway but you will not see this quilt top again until it's completely finished. That's because I'm sewing during the live chat on Saturday October 20th and I want to um do the final sewing there but I wanted to also get the recorded instructions ready so what I'm going to do is show you how I actually pin my borders and I did this same process when I sewed these two strip sets together as well when I sewed the uh, inner border pieces together so what I want to do is I got my quilt top here and I want to pin and I do believe in pinning 
my pieces have been cut uh, to the size of my quilt top and so I want to pin to make sure that I'm not going to um, have it where it's not even all the way throughout so I'm gonna take this I'm just gonna pin one of the borders on the side so I know that this is my inner border I also have the piece here that has my center marking so I'm going to actually put that to the center of the quilt top And then I'm actually going to put a pin in that. And I'm just going to bring some pins down so I can have them. So I'm pinning the center. And then I'm going to bring down the edge. And then I like to pin my ends, both edges. And I pin about two and a half inches away from the edge. That way I know that if I have to stretch a little bit, that my ends are going to be nice and flat. I'm only going to be stretching from this pin through to the center. Okay, but for right now, I'm going to go to the other end and go ahead and put in a second pin down here on this end. About again, two and a half to three inches away from the edge. Make sure I line up everything. Okay, so now that I've got those three pins in, I'm going to go from the pin here where I started to this pin down here, and I'm just going to stretch that, and then I'm going to walk my fingers along that until I can get myself into the approximate center between those pins. And then I'm also going to pin again. Okay, so now I've got a pin here and a pin right here. And now I am going to start pinning in the middle of those two pins. And if you need more pins, you can go ahead and add those as well. So I try to pin about every four to five inches in my borders just to keep anything from sagging and making sure that I've got my fabric eased in throughout my entire border. So I'm just bringing in some more pins. Try to pin in the center between two pins and then if I need to, I can go in between. It's better to have more pins than you need than not enough pins. Okay, so now I have just pinned from the center pin to the edge. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing with the other end. I'm going to hold my piece and then I'm going to lay it down on my table, my work surface. And then I'm going to just walk my fingers into the centers. And then once I get into what's an approximate center, put that pin in the middle. Again, go from pin to pin, find the middle. And then again, go from pin to pin, find the middle. Okay, now I just got this section here left that needs to be pinned. Again, I will find the middle between the two. And then add two more pins. Okay. So, I want to go ahead and do that to the other side. Remember, I'm pinning this onto the sides. I'm putting my side borders on first. So I would do that to the other side, which you will not see. And then I'm going to stitch these seams. And then I'm going to press these seams toward the first border. So I'm pressing it out. And then I am going to add my next strips together okay on the top and bottom and then i will come back to you with the photo of the finished quilt and then i do want to go ahead and say here just in case you all don't wait around that my quilt top measures 84 and three quarters from edge to edge and it's a square quilt 
if your quilt top does not measure 68 and three quarter inches, make sure that you cut your border pieces to the size of your actual quilt top. So make sure that you measure your quilt top, just in case I wasn't clear yesterday since I was recording early in the morning. Um, I just wanna make sure that you're making borders to the size of your quilt, not to the size of mine. I'm telling you what mine's came out to be. And if your sewing is different, it may be a little different. And also quilts on point have a tendency of being different sizes per each quilter. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this again. I'll come back and show you the finished quilt top, possibly outside on my deck. Hi guys, I'm back and I have done my Saturday night sewing chat where I put the borders on this quilt and I am just showing you the completed project. And this quilt is again 84 and 3 quarter inches square. And I will now be quilting this quilt. By now, a lot of you all know that this quilt is going to go to one of my tquilts.com supporters. Anybody that has ordered anything from me in 2020, uh, either online, pay, pay through PayPal, Cash App, or if you paid in person, or if you had some machine quilting done, your name has been put into the drawing. Um, I'm really looking forward to Wednesday, October 14th. That will be my 10 year anniversary on YouTube where this quilt will be drawn as a giveaway. Once it's quilted, I'm hoping by the end of the month, I will be sending this quilt to one Lucky T Quilters supporter. So that's my goal for right now. Maybe I'll come back in a fifth addendum video maybe showing you what I decided to put on it for quilting but we shall see depending on how much time I have let me show you a close-up of the corners on the quilt and then just some of the quilt itself and you can see how uh, my first row is going diagonally to that corner and then the next ones are crossed to so the next row diagonally up to that corner the next row across and I alternated that across and what it did was it gave me this zigzag pattern of me stitching so you can look at it in so many different ways and you can kind of see different ways to interpret how the strips are going you could even look at it this way and look at it as it a look at it as a plus look at it on the diamond and then you can look at it like a big giant nine patch. So it just depends on how you look at the quilt. So I paid careful attention to how I actually placed my string blocks. So that's it for this video series. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I may have an addendum to the quilting. I'm not sure yet. We'll see how that goes, but thank you for watching. Thank you all so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Share my channel with your other quilting friends, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye, T-Quilters. Stay blessed.